Hey, welcome back and today we're going to talk about dot manipulation and basic dot positions. So I have traced out my basic block, no ease, just traced it out basically. Now this you've probably seen on the internet, but this particular block has a way start. Just a way start. And then on the back we have a shoulder dart and a way start. Okay, so this is the basic dart position right now. Now this dart means that all here is fitted and everything, the all the excess has been pushed here. But you can take this and turn it into a different shape and there are different positions to do that so let's say this first one is a let's move and create another dart position here this is center front waist call that b this is mid bust or just center front and call this C. Then we have center front neck. Call this D. We have shoulder points, high neck, high neck points. Call this E. We have mid shoulder. Call this F. We have end of shoulder. Let's call this G. We have armhole. Call this H. We have bust or side. Call this I. We have French dart. This can go all the way here. I'm just going to make it go at this angle, lower quadrant, call this J. So that's for the front. For the back, the shoulder dart can be shifted to armhole. So let's call the waist A. I call this B. The one already here is C. If we move this, we can also put in the neck. Can call this D. And you can always put in the armhole. I call this E. So these are like classic places you can move your darts to. I think you can always put one here and add to the dart. So basically this one, it's turned around on the upper quadrant and this one is turned around on the lower quadrant. That's basically it. This can even be higher, just alternatively. So you can always go a little higher. This can also be higher, it's okay, it's the same thing. So these are what I like to call classic dart positions. It doesn't mean you can go in between here or anywhere else depending on the design of your outfits. But classically, if you look in your wardrobe, any outfit you have, it's either at the waist or it's at the armhole or it's at the bust or it's at the shoulder. These are really just classic positions. But the key thing I want you to note is that they all originate from the apex on the front 
the apex at the back and the apex here at the shoulder. So that's the important thing. So no matter where you decide to move it for whatever reason, always remember where it originates from. So when you know your classic dart positions, we can now go into how to move your dart. That manipulation is basically taking this dart and moving it anywhere else. So when you have something like this, I'm just going to show you how I move the darts. Now let's remember that my original dart was this one. This is my original waist dart. And I'm now going to move it to any of these points. Let's say I want to move it to the neck. Here. The main thing to do, I'm not going to do all of them. First, I will cut my original dart leg. The dart has two legs, one and two. I'll cut one, so that I'll use that to close the dart. Now you cut to the center, like so. Then, maybe I want to cut this one. This is one I want to open. I'm going to cut that. And cut. Try not to cut through the original hole. I just cut as close as possible. So, now that I've done that, I'm simply going to take this one, close my original dart, and now this one is open. So if we place it here, we've closed this one. So that was the dart, like this. We close it, like this. And now you have a new Just like that. So that is slash and spread. Similarly, I can move it elsewhere. I can even move it to maybe two darts. We have this one and this one. Maybe I want to move it to two other places. Maybe I want to move this, have a dart here and have a dart here. So I've already cut this one. I'm going to cut into the armhole. here what I'm going to do is instead of covering instead of closing instead of closing the whole thing I might just close it partially maybe halfway like here and leave this one halfway so now I have dart here and a dart here which is basically So, this rough trace there. So basically, I have one here. I 
Line of hair. Line of hair. Line of hair. Here. So now we have two ducks. So that's the thing. You can pretty much just decide where you want to move your dart. Close one, open another one, or open more than one and just leave space. I can even open a third. Maybe I open this and I open this and I open this. So that's one, two, three darts. So you can do that. So open here, here, open here, open here, open here. It depends on what you want to do. And that is what we call slash and spread. It's very straightforward. The next method I want to show you, and then for the back is the same thing. You can close this and move this elsewhere. So. So that will be for the back. I have moved the darts here. It's the same thing. So you can just do that. So moving on to the next method. For the pivots method, it's the same thing. We already have our dart positions. I can pick anyone. It doesn't matter. Let's say I want to move the dart to center front. I note down where I want to move it to. Now that's the important thing. I know that I want to move this dart here. So I've noted down that line, okay? I have my original dart. So what you do here is start with the first dart leg. In this case, I am maintaining a right angle here. So I'm going to start from this one closest to my right angle. And I mark and then trace. Yes, sir. You trace around and go all the way to this spot and you stop. Okay? So I started from one dart leg to the place I want to stop. And then you wait. Now you're going to take something sharp and put it at your dart like this and hold it at that point so that now you can turn this. So what I'm going to do is take the second dart leg, we started from this one, take the second dart leg, move it till it touches my starting point. That's the spot I started from. Once it touches there, I hold it down and guess where we continue from? From the our mark because that is where we've decided. And I now trace from that mark all the way around. Down and to the end. Okay, I ran out of paper, but basically we've opened this, put our dot, and now I'm just going to connect. So that is how everything has been moved there. Now the same thing, I can do another one. I'm going to repeat what I did previously where I'll open one in the armhole 
and leave some in the waist. So I'm going to mark two places. I'm going to mark halfway of the waist start and I'm going to mark in the armhole. Once again, I'll give myself a 90 degree angle. This is my 90 degree. This is not necessary, but it's just a way to remember what you're doing and to position it straight. So it is lined up. I'm going to start from my first dart leg that I'm hoping, sorry. I want to stop here, here. Okay. Now, I'm going to start from my first dart leg. Trace around. I'm going to go all the way around to there. Around, 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 and stop. That is where I'm stopping. Now, once again, we get our pin. Put it. Now I'm going to move our second dark there. We start from this first. Now remember, I want I don't want to close it completely. If I close it completely, I'll go all the way to the first line. No, we want to do close it halfway. I've already marked a halfway point. So I'm going to take that second dart leg and just close it till I get to the halfway point that I made, which is here. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and hold. And I'm going to trace around and around and stop at this point. Now before I lift, I'm going to check to make sure I've opened a dart here and I've opened a dart here and I have marked my center point. So two darts have been open. You see you have two darts this is the same thing we did with slash and spread and uh, we've done the same thing here now you really just have to use whatever technique you find comfortable so remember it's the same thing i did here i started from the first dart leg and traced around the only difference here is that i had marked where to stop instead of closing all the way to the first dart leg i had marked a halfway point that i wanted to stop my closure and that is how i ended up with two i could have closed the whole thing, I could have closed the whole thing here and that would have opened this dart leg all the way here, but I didn't do that. So it's the same thing and this would have been completely closed. So remember that I could have done that, I could have just closed everything. Let's trace this on top so that you see. So if I had chosen to close everything, so that's if I had decided to close the full dart. I did not. So it's the same thing. It takes some practice. So that is spread and slash. Now the whole point of this exercise is just how to move your darts to different points. This is really not about full creating fullness or anything at this point. It's just understanding that we're moving our fullness from one point to another to multiple places. Here we carried all the fullness from the waist to the top and with this you can create different designs. So I hope it helped and it made sense. This is the same thing. I use the bodice, but reason being is usually the bodice people have to do these things, but you can do the same for your trousers. I could have, I can move a dart from your trousers. People don't usually move darts in trousers, but there is nothing stopping you. I could just decide to go one at the side, or one here, or one here, and do something funky. Most people don't really do that, but it's the same principle. The same with the skirt you can shift this dart to another side. This is different from moving your dart. Moving your darts would require me to just ignore this dart, 
and redraw it maybe on the side that is moving i just took this dot and carried it and moved it i'm not pivoting it that's not pivoting pivoting would have required me to close this one and maybe open it somewhere here like i'll close this and open it here but if i just take the whole dot and just redraw it in a different spot that is moving it's the same thing with a bodice this is pivoting if i wanted to just move the dart i would actually have to redraw a line and move the dart for whatever reason but the problem remember this is our apex and our bust and everything radiates from here so even if you wanted to create a second dart it still has to be connected to the apex for it to make sense all right we'll go into more of that later i hope you had fun with this and we'll see you in the next video bye